encourage you to set down your phone, set down your social media, at least at least a, a portion of the day, if not a couple days a week. Because we need you in this fight. Not just through November, but we need you until January. Because uh, trust me, we are going to be pushing back on a lot of lies. A lot of seditious lies from now until January. And we need you in this fight. And we need people. We need people like Cliff. We need people like Sherry. We need Gabe. We need the Library of Democracy. We need the 5 8. We need Pardon the Insurrection. We need Dr. H. Bitikoff, or We need the Jess Pipers of the world. We need all these people out there yelling and screaming. Because we got to go full court press on these fascists. It's going to be super important. But it also, again, it's super important that you take a little break now and then so that you don't get too exhausted because we don't want your brain to break. <laughs> I don't want I don't want I don't want your brain to break. And I know it's uh, very emotional right now and it's very stressful. Because of all the bullshit that the media puts out. The lame stream media and then you get the boob tube shit libs that kind of get distracted, too. Right. But we got to go full court press on MAGA here. And it's very important that you're ready to go between now and November 5th. And then from November 5th, really until about February. <laughs> I mean, you never know what the hell is going to happen at the end of uh, January. And we've got to get this new administration. So we got we to gotta make sure we're out there messaging hard all the way into February, maybe even into March until this administration is fully staffed. Because they're going to need our support. They're going to need it. Not only are they going to need our vote, they're going to need our support once they become, uh, once Kamala Harris and Tim Walls become the president and vice president of the United States. They're going to need our support. Now, there'll be time for criticism. I promise that. I promise you, I will not hold back if we need to criticize that administration. But in the beginning, we definitely, they definitely need our support with messaging. Because it's not just it's it's going to be twenty twenty all over again with the election fraud talk and the nonsense, and there's going to be plenty of people to go to jail. There's going to be plenty of fucking. There's don't worry, do not worry. A lot of these Cheeto humping fuck nuggets are definitely going to go to prison for Trump. You can fucking bet on that, and you can almost bet that Donald Trump's going to end up in a fucking prison cell. With his cold bare feet on the floor. But we got to hang in there. So this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to have a few reruns. Uh, I think Cliff's show, will, uh, we're, I think Wednesday and Thursday is what he's going to do. He's going to do two live streams this week with Cliff. So uh, after. My show's over. It'll dump right into his show, even though I'm not live. It'll it'll go straight to him. <laughs> so you'll you'll go straight to Cliff you now Wednesday and Thursday uh, for his live stream over on Cliff's Edge. He's going to do more and more live streams as we get closer and closer to the election. That's what he's told me. That's what his plan is. Um. So and again, Sherry's got her new YouTube channel. We're just we're just trying to get the message out there. And that's what we have to do. So go follow all the people on the list of the Friends of the Tony Michaels podcast. All of them. Go follow them and support those voices because it is going to be crucial that we are as loud as we possibly can be. Speaking of being loud, oh my God, this guy. Let's see. I think I got a report here of um, from Kyle Clark. Kyle Clark did a little bit of report on them. Um, where he was saying, uh, <laughs> where Trump was saying that he's going to turn the military on U.S. citizens. I, I, I wish, I wish this wasn't true, and I wish it what really wasn't kind of, kind of hilarious because I've been telling you this is what the fuck his plan is for a long time. I've been telling you people this is what the fuck they're going to do. <laughs> I'm like Tony's crazy. He says the word Nazi way too much. Oh, he gets way outside the boundaries of what really a person should be saying about MAGA and Republican. Fuck you. Fuck you. 
Okay, I've seen this coming for four goddamn years. Longer than that, really, but just out loud to the public for about four goddamn years is how long I've been expressing my feelings about how and where MAGA was going. But you guys know I'm a huge fan of Kyle Clark. Uh, Oh, shit, hang on a second. God damn it. God damn it. Technical difficulties. All right. Here's Kyle. Right? This is Kyle Clark. You may know him from the uh, Bobert debates. That might be one place that you know Kyle Clark. Uh, he's a he's a reporter with uh, Nine News. And he's got this show next on Nine News with uh, Kyle Clark. He's an anchor out there in Denver. Um, does great reporting. I, I actually think um, that we should make him our national moderator <laughs> for debates. Any national debate, pre- president, vice president, this guy should be the only one that does those. Yes, that's what I'm saying. We should make sure that only Kyle Clark does it because he's the absolute best. He's a professional. Um, but this is his report on what Trump has been saying about using the military against U.S. citizens, not just migrants, not just illegal immigrants, which no one's really illegal. He's talking about U.S. citizens. Check this out. I missed something during last week's Donald Trump rally in Aurora. Was standing there, heard it, just wasn't sure if I heard what I thought I heard, so we did not play it back to you here. It seemed that Trump was talking in Aurora about using the U.S. military against Americans that he says hate this country. Listen to what he said. We have the greatest military in the world, but you have to know how to use them. You have to know how to use them. But I protect you against outside enemies. But, you know, I always say we have the outside enemy. So you can say China, you can say Russia, you can say Kim Jong-un, you can say. But that's not the, It's going to be fun. If you have a smart. Person, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I love Putin. I love Xi Jinping. I love Kim Jong-un. They're my best. We f- we suck each other off all the time. We have circle jerks. That's what this dance is about. I'm jerking off two of them at a time. That's what this is about. What? Why did he say that? What? President, no problem. It's the enemy from within. All the scum that we have to deal with. Whoa, 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 whoa. The enemy within. Are you talking about an insurgency? Like an insurgency that would use seditious lies to try to overturn our government to, I don't know, like mm, appoint a chancellor or a dictator for a day or something? Something like that? Maybe someone who would round up all the people. We're trying to prevent ourselves from the scum. We want to round up all the citizens and undocumented people in this country and genocide them. Is that is that what we, I don't know? What is he talking about? What's he talking about? That hate our country. That's a bigger enemy than China and Russia. I, I mean, I agree with him. I agree with him <clears throat> that MAGA is much uh, much more dangerous of an enemy to our country. I mean, Russia and China want to destroy us, right? But they're they're you know I kind of agree with him here. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. MAGA, the enemy within, the insurgency in our country who wants to topple our government, who wants to undo our constitution, who wants to make an authoritarian, who wants a theocratic monarchy, is much more of a threat to our nation than what Russia and China could ever fucking dream of being. It's pretty clear now. So, I, you know what? I agree with him. But maybe Kyle is hearing something I'm not hearing. Check it out. All right. The the military thing and the enemy within, like, the comments are kind of next to each other, but it's not super clear. Well, over the weekend on Fox, Trump just came out and said what he seemed to be saying in Aurora. He has a desire to use the U.S. military against American citizens. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. By the way. Okay, so there's a a little bit of a change. You notice there's the change in the rhetoric. All right. Now this is really important. And this is really important how he's he's changing what he's saying. Okay? And here's why it's very important. It's called seeding. I've told you this before. It's called seeding. He's planting seeds, he's letting those trees grow, and then he's harvesting the fruit off those trees. 
So he seeds one idea, right? He seeds the enemy within. He seeds that idea. But he's saying, oh, it's not it's not the countries like Russia and China and North Korea. You know, those big, huge enemies, right? That's how he plants the seed of the enemy within. That's how he plants that seed. Because he's not, you know, he's not, he's not, I'm not talking about skin color or religion, ethnicity. I'm not, I'm talking about uh, Russia and China. The enemy within though, the enemy within. What does that mean? Well, now he's changed his rhetoric here, right? He's turned a corner. Uh, oh, let me go back to the up, 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 right here. Let's go back to being I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within. Okay. Not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. But the people that have come in? What do you mean? Like Russians? Like North Koreans? Like like Xi Jinping's Chinese? I, I don't understand what he's saying. It's That's two different things, you see? You see how those are two different things? What he's talking about now is he's, he's planted the seed of the enemy within. Now he's planting the seed, and he's been planting the seed of those pesky browns. Those pesky blacks, even if they're even if they're here legally or were brought here legally. Oh, they're pesky. They're the scum that's destroying our country. It's no longer Russia. It's no longer Xi Jinping. It's no longer China or North Korea and Kim Jong Un. Now he switched from the enemy within. And it's not really he's comparing it now to migrants. The people who are here from somewhere else. By the way, totally destroying our country. By the, the way, totally yeah. villages yep. are being inundated. Villages? What the? I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess some places in this country, you can consider some of these places villages. But do we really call them villages in our, this country? So when, when when did we start in our culture start calling towns and cities villages? I mean, you know, it might be in the name, right? A village might be like a subdivision of a town. It's just, it's really weird how he says villages. It makes me think like he's saying white neighborhoods. <laughs> that's, that's what he, that's what he's saying. White, only whites live in villages. Racists know that, duh. But I don't think the other problem in terms of election day, I think the bigger problem are the, People from within. We have some very bad people. Oh, some sick people. Ooh, I feel like he's talking about me. You know? Some sick people, bad people. Yeah. Yeah, they're bad. They're bad for fascists, right? Fuck yeah, they're bad for fascism. They're bad for theocratic monarchs. Yep. You goddamn right we are, bitch. We are very fucking bad. I am dangerously liberal. <laughs> and let me tell you, I'm so dangerously liberal that I am a pain in the ass for a bunch of fucking fascists who want to overthrow our Constitution. Yes, I am a bad person to fascist. Correct. Sick people, radical left. Yep. Lunatics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lunatics. And yep. I think mm -hmm. the, and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or if really necessary, by the military. Whoa, 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 whoa. Handled? What the fuck does that mean? Think about that for a second. What does that what does that mean? Handled? What is hand, did Hitler handle the Jews in the Second World War? In Germany and Poland? Did he handle them? Is that what he did? Is that what he's talking about? Handle it. With the National Guard. Which um, I, I don't know if uh, he knows this, but the first authority for the National Guard is states. So he'd have to get governors to go along with it. Or maybe he's suggesting that there won't be governors. Why, why, why would Donald Trump need governors? Why would he just, he just not just say there's no states, there's no boundaries anymore. I own it all. It's all mine. He's a theocratic monarch at that point. He's been dictator for one day. He can just say there's on that day. He can just say there's no states. I disband all the governors, all the state governments, all the state constitutions. They're gone. Why not? I mean, why I wouldn't want he want to be a dictator for one day? Just one day. Just one day. He can just declare none of those constitutions, none of that protection. No person is a citizen of a state anymore. They're only a citizen of his nation. His. 
That's that's what a guy who talks like this will do, people. He is saying that if someone does not agree with him and who is a radical leftist, a dangerous liberal like me and you, he'll get the military to handle it if the National Guard won't. But again, he's giving away the game. If the National Guard won't, fuck it. I'll just I'll just usurp the National Guard. I'll disband National Guards. I'll I'll disband states. I'll disband the executive branches and I, I'll disband the judiciary in those states. That's how he's going to protect himself in New York and Georgia. You know that, right? That's his plan. Because everyone's like, well, he can't pardon himself if he becomes president in New York or Georgia. Yeah, but he's going to be the dictator, dummy. They are going to give him full unilateral power. He's a totalitarian. He's an authoritarian. He ain't going to give a fuck about your rule of law in states. He ain't going to give a fuck about your judiciary in states. He's not. He won't give two shits. He'll just say Georgia's not a state anymore. Now try to indict me. New York's not a fucking state anymore. It's a U.S. territory and I'm in control. You people are wild if you do not see this shit in his rhetoric. It's wild that he says the shit he says, how he says it, and people aren't seeing it. Because he's not just talking about turning the U.S. military against us, the citizens. Which is... (laughs) highly unconstitutional it's illegal he can't he cannot look at the military and it be a lawful order under our constitution right now right now our constitution does not allow the president of the united states to look at the military and dod and say go kill the people i don't like he thinks it does because he's read the immunity well they're immune well, you're immune from giving that illegal order. You're immune if someone carries it out. But those people are not immune from the law. But if there is no constitution, remember that. This guy's plan on day one is to get rid of the fucking constitution, folks. He plans on trashing your liberty. Except for day one. That's what he's going to do. That's what his plan is. And I don't know if he's got uh, more concepts of plans like this, but he really should find a, a makeup artist that has more than a concept of plan. Look at this guy. Jesus fucking Christ. I hate to be, uh, you know, petty here. You know, I know I'm talking about important stuff like this guy. If he becomes president of the United States, he's going to kill all of us because he doesn't like us because we don't like him. But look at this fucking blending here. Look at that. Can't I don't know who what asshole is doing this guy's fucking makeup, but look at that. They can't even blend back to the ear. There is clearly, clearly a an, an area right here between his fucking his hog eye, his pig eye. Doesn't it look like he looks you ever seen that meme where it's like pig eyes and his eyes, and it's hard to tell which is which? But you can't look at this space. Why aren't they blending that? Is someone telling him that this looks good? What the fuck is this? <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. I know it's a hard reality. And it's hard to artic- articulate it. I get it. I get those messages a lot. I don't respond to every single uh, DM or private message that I receive from you all. Because if I did, I, that's all I would do. All right. I know I don't respond to every single comment that you send. And I, and I can't read them all. It's almost impossible. Because you are so highly engaged. And I appreciate that. That is that is what gives me hope. That is what gives me the drive to come here every day and do what I do. But I understand what you're saying, that it's hard to articulate what I say. Because a lot of people don't look at this situation and see what I see. And the reason why is because <laughs> maybe you haven't been down some of the rabbit holes listening to what some of these people have been saying. 
Maybe you just haven't been as interested in the right wing and studying the right wing and their rhetoric for decades on end. You got to remember, uh, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I was listening to talk radio. Now, I, I was vehemently disagreeing with it. Most of the time, I would yell and scream, just like I'm doing here. Like, I had a lot of practice. Th this comes with a lot of practice. Now, I've only had my microphone powered on for about four years, but I've been doing this for a long fucking time. And I've been listening to where they're headed and watch them head there for over 20 years. And really, I've been paying attention to politics for about 25, since I was a teenager. I was interested in politics. But I listened to them carefully. I saw how their message would change, how the rhetoric would change year by year, candidate by candidate. I'm a student of history. I love history. Uh, I don't actually have a history degree because I dropped out of college twice. Yes, I'm a two-time college dropout. The first time I was really stupid. I went for business. That was dumb. For me, it was. And the second time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something I enjoy. I studied history and poli-sci, poli political science. And, you know, family and work and that sort of thing. And money kind of got in the way, so I, I dropped out. But I never was not a student of history. Some of the history that really interests me the most is how our world got in a situation like we did in the 1930s and the 1940s. Where we had to let millions of people die all around the world. Rather, they were being... Marched into ovens because of their because of their religion or who they were, and, and, and Nazis committing genocide. Rather, it was men on the beaches against the Japanese or North Africa and Italy, France. All those people lost their lives. For something really stupid. The dumbest thing ever. Just a lie. Our entire world was turned upside down. Because of a lie. And here we are. In the dumbest fucking timeline. Ever. Dumber. Some would argue. Than that World War II tim timeline. And all we're doing is sitting here watching history unfold and repeat itself because of some stupid fucking lie. Some stupid fucking lie. And really, honestly, it's just it's a pile of lies, right? A pile. That doesn't do it justice either. God damn, it's a and it's not even a mountain. It's a mountain range of lies with this motherfucker. If he's fucking breathing, he's lying. All of this, all of it, the whole fucking nine yards, the same thing in the Second World War with Adolf Hitler, the Germans, the Nazis, Italy with Mussolini, and the Japanese, all because of a fucking lie. And here we are, not even 100 years later, we're doing this shit all over again. All over again. The good news is that in this timeline right now that we have right now, we have the opportunity in three weeks. We have the opportunity in three weeks to make our voices heard. To not be complacent. To not just stand back and let it happen. Because in this democracy, at least for now, we win with ballots, not bullets. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this.